All right, well, it's a nine after four after nine, so we'll get started, and then if people get on, they get on. Um, so I've always looked up to Mindy as an awesome leader um, ever since you know she joined, which was after me. <laughs> But, um, and her team, she's been, she's a part of Diesel Nation. If you guys know, actually the name of her team is Team Relentless. And she's, was, who's your coach? Becky, right? Becky Brossette is the coach. And she lives in Texas. She's a two-time elite coach. And pretty much from day one, your business pretty much just took off, right? I mean, she was just a rock star from day one. And a lot of it has come from your blog or... Facebook? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. And so we met, I don't even know, a super Saturday here in Miami at some point. And what I like about Mindy and kind of part of the reason that I wanted her to come on the call is because she is very real. She's just her and, you know, you see it in her posts and I really, I love that. So I asked her to come and share her story and she wants to talk about how it, Beachbody totally changed her mindset, and whatever else she wants to share, then it's totally up to you. Take it away, girl, and I'm recording it, so if anybody misses it, then they can watch it later. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. Yes, as Marissa was saying, we met at a Super Saturday in Miami that's hosted uh, you know, quarterly by my coach and her sister who co-founded Deepo Nation. It was uh, my third it's January 2013, so I've been a coach a uh, little less a year, and it was a very, very amazing experience. But I, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about me before we get started, because if anybody follows me or knows me now, it's really hard to, um, you know, look and see how much change I've made. So I always try to go back and share my story. Um, but a little bit about me: I was adopted at nine and a half months old, uh, moved from Korea to California and adopted by really awful people. And, you know, with that being said, obviously, you know, you can imagine being adopted and then being raised in a community with not no contact to other adoptees, no contact to anybody that's Korean, being one of five Asian kids raised by people who were very abusive and on top of it, uh, really religious, they're Jehovah's Witnesses, so I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Um, my lifestyle was not like a normal person. So um, I had a lot of abandonment issues and self-esteem issues, and I just didn't ever fit in. And so you know, with that, you know, growing up and the abuse that I endured physically, as well as, you know, it had nothing to do with my adopted parents, but sexual abuse, um, I turned into this person that, you know, was tied to bad habits and bad addictions, drugs, alcohol, um, you know, bad behavior patterns. And I just felt like a failure. And I felt like um, I wasn't in touch with who I was and trying to fit in my whole entire life. I just kind of went with whatever way the crowd was going. And I was so different, you know, having ADD, anxiety, depression, being a Jehovah's Witness, being, you know, one of, like I said, five Asian people in my small, small community you know, I, I didn't feel like I had a place. And so, you know, because of that, like I said, I had a lot of addictions and I used that to basically drown out the um, pain that I had and that, you know, there's always something missing. And uh, it got worse the older I got. You know, as a child, I had really bad OCD, anxiety, and depression, and suicidal tendencies. But the older I got, the worse it got. And it never went away. Uh, I was never allowed to participate in anything in school. So I didn't do anything with athletics or... Um, you know, any clubs or anything. And I couldn't wait till I was 18. I wanted to get away from my family. And then I found out I was pregnant on my 18th birthday. So that kind of kept me grounded. But along the way, I felt even more lost after having my daughter because, you know, I questioned what type of mother I could be. And it was weird to me to, you know, if you're not adopted, you don't understand, may not understand, but to have your first blood relative there and having no you know, maternal, I had maternal instincts, but no bond to anybody. This was all so new. So I struggled really bad with relationships. I was very negative, very cynical, very skeptical of everything. And as a coping mechanism, you know, I pushed people away. I didn't, uh, you know, I wanted to go into every room being the scariest and the meanest looking person there, you know, so that I basically kept my guard up so that nobody would mess with me. And so that nobody would ever know my fears and my inhibitions and my, 
you know, innermost thoughts. And I was just a lost person. I, you know, I found myself getting into relationships and doing and saying things that I didn't really want to do because I just thought that that's what somebody else expected of me or I felt pressured because I just wanted to fit in. And, you know, I never said any goals. My parents weren't people who went to college. They weren't people who said, you know, I hope you grow up and get married and give us grandchildren. You know, so every day was just, you know, get through the day, Mindy, as painlessly as possible. Don't kill anyone. Don't want to kill yourself. You know, and that was my only goal. And I wouldn't even call that a goal, but that was just how I muddled through life. And, you know, I hit highs and lows, highs and lows. You know, on top of it, I had, you know, fidelity issues and daddy issues and, uh, you know, very promiscuous, you know, just trying to find love and placement. And, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so, you know, fast forward, you know, to 2012, I was married for the third time. I had been with the same man um, since 2006. So that was a record for me. We had um, a son and um, we hit a really bad spot in our relationship after, you know, a little less than two years of being married. We almost hit, you know, uh, you know, the breaking point and wanted a divorce. And, you know, I'd been living a pretty happy life having my new son and you know, I stepped away from the bar scene. I was really focusing on being a good person, but then all the problems we had, I slipped back and off at you know, excessive drinking. You know, I'm talking about 12 to 24 beers a day, two, three packs of cigarettes a day. Um, and, you know, was very unhappy with myself and was just basically trying to mask the pain. Um, he went to work in the oil field, so he was gone seven days at a time home for maybe two, three, four days at the most, and then, you know, back, you know, leaving again, and it always changed, he was on nights, he was on days, so I was stuck home by myself with three children, you know, all under the age 11, and two of them were in school, good homework, I lived 20 minutes from town, worked full-time in a job full of very negative people, so I was in a really, really bad place. Um, I remember when our son, Rebel, was about five months old, going on a company trip, and Realizing I only had two outfits that fit me. And I remember getting so pissed off and just stressed out when it came to finding an outfit. And so I was like, oh God, at least the trip's only one day overnight so I can pack these, you know, two outfits. And I was uncomfortable. I remember going and just my my goal was on this trip, like, I'm gonna get completely annihilated drunk this night, my first night away from my son. I mean, I just look back, I'm like, God, that was my goal. Um, but you know, we we just went on this trip and didn't have a lot of fun. And you know, he came back, went back to work, and I remember around the holidays sitting, watching football all by myself, and just, you know, getting sloshed drunk, you know, in my living room by myself, and he was gone, and it was about mid-January 2012, it's very, very cold in Texas, I know everybody thinks it's hot, but it was like freezing, it's like, because the humidity, it's like super freezing, so I'd always wear like sweater dresses, and you know, leggings, and boots, and I remember putting on these pair of leggings that were one size fits all, I sat down at my desk, and I looked down, and I had like all these fat rolls, and I never had that before, I was never athletic, like I said, I never had six pack abs, but I was at the heaviest I'd ever been, and I'd lost all my weight after each child, after six weeks, so I'm like, what is up with this, you know, he's, you know, a year and a half old, and you know, I started trying to do exercises off of Pinterest. And maybe some of you did that. And I'm sure some of you have challengers out there who are like, I'm doing it on my own. I've got, you know, I've got my own routine. Well, obviously, you know, it's better than doing nothing, but it's not very effective workouts. Um, so I started searching for something. I wanted to feel better about myself, but I didn't really know how. You know, I would talk to a few friends. They'd be like, why don't you join a gym? Well, look at the scenario. My husband worked out of town. We live 20 minutes from town. And I had a 10-year-old. So was I going to get up early in the morning and leave my children, my other two small children, with my 10-year-old daughter and drive to town and then have to be back, shower dressed, and get three kids to three different places before work? Or would I wait till after work, getting all the kids, and then making sure that, you know, my oldest daughter in the little daycare room watched my other two kids, then run home at, you know, 7 o'clock at night and cook dinner? Obviously, that was out of the question. I had no idea about, you know, at-home working out. But I stumbled across my coach, Becky, um, on Facebook. And, you know, Facebook is a huge, huge, huge tool for you to grow your business, any social media platform. But I really like how, you know, with Facebook, you know, I suggested it, all of you have a Facebook and are, have, have it set to private that you change it to public. Because 
one of my first coaches was her customer. Somehow she had found Becky online. Well, she commented on a picture of, of Becky's abs that she posted one day, and she was in the middle of doing P90X too. So her abs were popping. Her abs pop anyways. It's ridiculous. But, you know, and I was like intrigued instantly. And I went to her Facebook page and I started like stalking her, stalking her husband, stalking her sister, Christina. And Christina said, I was like, why was I not stock worthy? Well, I didn't get that far. Um, you know, if you're a beach buddy coach, there's lots of posts, but because of all of their profiles being public, number one, her picture popped up my newsfeed. It caused, you know, interest. I went to her page. It was public. It wasn't closed up where you couldn't see anything. I was able to see, you know, as far as I could scroll, I went through all of her albums. I'm like, man, this chick is legit and she is into fitness. Like I said, I saw people she tagged, her husband and her sister, the same thing. And all I saw was a fitness family, a family that was consistent, people that seemed to know what they were doing and weren't going to leave me behind. So along with that, if, you know, make sure that your page is public. Make sure that you have consistency. I mean, I look at some people's pages and some are coaches and not coaches, and some there's like weeks without any posts or, you know, a day or two without posts. Not saying you have to post every hour and be a slave to your phone, but it's really important because had I not been able to see this track record and consistency of their family, I'm not sure that I would have, you know, chosen her or reached out to her. So I friended her. And instantly I got a message. Thanks for the friend request. If you need any um, help, you know, on a, your fitness or weight loss journey, let me know. I've got help. And I said, uh, no, thanks. But that's another thing is make sure that when people friend you and they, you know, there are obviously some interest. If you don't know them already, they obviously are interested in you. So reach out to them to have that open door that whenever they're ready, they can come to you. So, you know, I watched her and I stalked her for about two or three days. I, I don't know exactly how long, but it was a while. And then I think she said something about a free gift, and it happened to be I got Turbo Fire, the greatest hits, um, this from her, which was worth nineteen ninety five. I remember her saying something about if you order some now, you'll get a free gift. And so then I said, well, I want to order P ninety X because that's all I've really seen her post because that was what got her journey started. And back when we became coaches, there wasn't a lot of programs. And I remember seeing P ninety X one night when Ryan and I came home from the bar really, really late. And I remember saying like, oh my god, these people's bodies are amazing. And I was like, do you think that really works? And he was like, I don't know. He was like, I heard it works, but it's really hard, and nobody ever finishes it. And I'm like, I was like, oh, I'm like those people that are on this infomercial are probably people that just do work out all day long and that's what they do for a living. Obviously coaches who are full-time, like, you know, Marissa and I, yeah, we do this full-time. We don't work out all day long, but I mean, I was kind of on to something, I guess. So I ordered P90X and well, I reached out to her and then she told me about Shakeology. My internet was real sketchy um, back then and, you know, I couldn't get it to load. I was getting frustrated like a lot of customers do. And back then, you know, I tried to sign up for a free membership and then you had to go back in. It was a mess to try to order a challenge pack after you've already become a member. I, don't, I can't remember all the details, but I remember it was a pain years and years ago. And I was getting frustrated and then I started doubting myself because everything that I tried had to work. Diet pills, slim fast, curves, you know, um, Atkins diet, you know, all sorts of things didn't work. And yeah, I went to the gym, didn't see the results. So I thought it was the same thing. And I thought, I'm not going to stick to this. And I didn't want to work out in front of my husband. So I'm like, how are we going to work this? And, you know, yada, 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 yada. And then I said, oh, I'm going to go to a baby shower. And I was like, I'll order later. Well, she checked back and followed up with me twice. So that's another thing is when people kind of flake out and go, you know, on a, you know, to pull a Houdini act on you. It's not always you. It's not that they're flakes. It's not that they don't believe in you or the product. It's that they don't believe in themselves. But she did follow up with me twice. And, you know, we started talking early in the morning and I didn't order till like eight o'clock that night. And I did because she followed up with me and she got on the phone and talked to me. Like, and, you know, I was frustrated. She took the time on a Saturday and called me and talked to me. And I was like, okay, she's a real person. So a lot of people don't understand how the coaching opportunity works. And, you know, I got started. I remember telling my girls, oh, I ordered this program and don't tell Ryan because I wanted to surprise him. It wasn't that. I just had such low self-esteem. I didn't want to work out in front of him. I didn't want to um, have him know that I was doing something because I was afraid I was going to fail. And as a matter of fact, I had all planned out that it would arrive the day he was going back to work. And I come home from work that day and he was still here mowing the lawn. And I was like, oh my God, I was like, the package is here. And, and I thought, oh, God, he's going to open it or he's going to ask me. And somehow, for some reason, there was little shelves in her garage that the, the, the mailman or the UPS man or FedEx or whoever it was back then put it on there. And I saw it. My heart was racing because I didn't want to know. And I threw it in this closet and hit behind all the stuff. 
not that he would have dug through the closet before I left, but I mean, this was just my mindset then. And then I was watching him like, okay, he's right here in the yard. I'm like, I think I have time. So I'm ripping open the box. I get my Shakeology. To tell you the truth, I have no clue how I prepared it. I know it's chocolate. I don't think I added, all, maybe I added almond milk. I have no earthly idea. But I mixed it together, chugged it so fast that I can't even tell you. I mean, obviously I liked it, but I can't even tell you what my first experience was because I just want it done through the blender and the dishwasher. And I hurried him off and got him out the door, said bye. And then, you know, that night I got all the kids ready. After I got my son to bed, I asked Haley, my oldest, who's like I said, 10, to take my before pictures. And I'll never forget the feeling I had of just utter shame and embarrassment in front of my kid. Kids are very, like, non-judgmental. They, you know, I was her mom. She loved me, but I was embarrassed. I mean, so I told you my mindset. But she took my before pictures. And right when I was sitting down, to put the, I put the disc in, and it, I put it back in buys. I did probably what maybe some of you did or your childers did. I just put the first disc in. I didn't open the books. I didn't look at the schedule. And it, right then, Becky texted me and said, hey, did you get your package today? So obviously she was paying attention, tracking my order, making sure that she was following up with me to – no, let me know she was with me on my journey. And then I remember being frustrated. I'm like, you said I didn't need anything to start this. And she was like, well, you don't. You're not for the first couple of weeks. I'm like, well, it says I have to do a full bar. She's like, well, which one are you doing? Lean, classic, or doubles? And I'm like, doing. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, watch your book, go to the page. Da, 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 da. There's certain routines. I was like, oh. So I decided to do lean since I was just starting it. And she was correct. The first month, you didn't need a pull up bar or anything. So I got started, but she, Put me a P90X challenge group that she had that her and her sister were running. I got the support. I started working in there. And when I felt like a failure, there was people there who were a week ahead of me saying, you know, you can do it. You can get better. And lo and behold, on day eight, I was able to do 10 push-ups without even thinking it, just watching the screen. And I was able to reflect back on day one of doing core synergistics. I could barely do five push-ups on my knees. And so that was encouraging. I posted in the group. I got involved. So here's the thing is that if you have a challenge group, make – Make sure that you are keeping people engaged, putting people in there, giving them that support. The support doesn't just come from the coach. It also comes from the challengers. And I always tell people why the challenge groups are so great. Because, you know, when I was on week two, we had people coming in like me who were starting. And I was able to give my testimony, encourage them. There's still those people are on my Facebook where I'm friends with that we started, you know, at the same time. Obviously, our journeys have, you know, been not necessarily parallel, but we're still here. And... You know, on day 13, I ended up putting on a pair of pants. You know, I didn't do measurements. I did pictures, and that's it. I didn't, have, I didn't own a scale. I, just, you know, I was fat before I started. And I put on a pair of pants, and I was like, whoa, I lost at least the whole pant size. My pants were huge. And so I posted a picture saying, you know, oh, my God, I lost a full pant size. Well, by the time I got to work, my Facebook was blowing up. People were like, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then I got to my desk. I was like, talk to Becky. I don't know. And, you know, and that's when she said, Mindy, you have all these people who are asking you questions, you know, and you should become a coach. And I had, once I got to the day three, I started posting about my P90X, you know, uh, journey. And I remember saying one day, like, you know, I'm not as strong as I want to be, but I'm stronger than I thought I'd be. And I would tell people about that, like, you know, wow, I actually finished P90X, whatever. And I started telling people about my journey. And I wasn't selling it because I had no idea I could sell or be a coach. But, I, you know, I remember she said, why don't you become a coach? And I, I said, I, well, what, what is that? And she gave me a little spill. I don't remember exactly what she said. I was like, oh, no. So I gave her every excuse maybe some of you have given or heard. You know, I haven't reached my goal. I haven't finished P90X. I don't know if I'm going to finish P90X. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, stay drinking Shakeology. I don't need the discount. I'm not a salesman. I've tried network marketing back in the 90s, and I sucked at it with some stupid crystal stuff and candle stuff. You know, um, I don't know many people. I don't have enough time. I mean, literally, I kept shooting out things. And she never argued with me. But she had a, you know, a, a response to every objection that made me think that she wasn't pressuring me or that made me feel stupid. But it made me realize that what I was saying was invalid. And it was based on assumptions that really stemmed from my fear and my um, uh, inability to believe in myself. And so at the end of the conversation, I was like, screw it. I'm just going to become a coach. Not for any other. I, I had no why other than just the fact that this lady is obviously knows more than I do. And what do I have to lose? You know? So I got started. I was telling people, I'm a coach. I started blasting it in probably the, no, in the worst way, posting my link out there. And, you know, just be, I was very salesy, everything that I was scared to do. 
but I got immediate response from people because they watched me for 13 days and saw that results. And because of the fact that like Marissa said, I'm very real. I'm very raw. I'm very honest. I'm very blunt. I'm very, you know, I say inappropriate things. I say things that rub people the wrong way, but I really, I'm just opinionated. I've always been that way. And I, I truly think after reflecting over the last three and a half years of being a coach is that my honesty that I've carried with me that I always thought was a, uh, a curse to me because it pissed people off a lot of time was actually, you know, I realized that it was actually a blessing to me now because the fact that people, I'm not one of those people that just, puts my stamp on anything. Yeah, I went with the crowds on things. I did things I didn't really want to do. I did because other people wanted me to do it. But I mean, but I don't get real excited or passionate about it a lot of stuff unless I believe it. And then if I believe it, there's no changing my mind. And I'm going to convince everybody I can that I'm right. And I'm going to show them why I'm right. Not because I think I'm right, because I am right. And I think that is truly why people believed in me is because I, I was my passion showed through and it was believable that I truly put my stamp on this and I endorse this. So then, you know, the first two weeks, but you know, I became a, uh, I looked at my report today. Um, I became a coach on February 15th. You know, that was like on Wednesday, I made 60 bucks. The next week I made 300 bucks, you know, in commissions. So I covered my cost of my, you know, $205 challenge pack. By day 90, I had made, you know, a thousand dollars by a little after a month, like, like I think it was three and a half or four months I hit diamond and I, I remember that June I had my first $1,000 month and then I was like wow okay I think I can do this and I people kept coming to me and I've never ran out of people because I've slowly shared my story and I really attribute my success to plugging into personal development books not my thing I have ADD and it is really hard to stay focused but Listening, I started listening to the Craig Holiday series because he used to be affiliated with Beachbody. So it was like a, a eight or nine part call that was you know, like an hour call each. And I remember what he said on one of the calls. He said, if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? And, you know, I lived in failure mode for so long that I just assumed I'd be stuck in failure mode and stayed in failure mode. And, you know, there's the people out there who are poor and they grew up poor and they just think that they're going to be stuck poor. You know, I remember him telling a story about how many times he's fell off filed bankruptcy, what his childhood was like, about all these businesses he's had that failed. And I remember thinking like, wow, he has a lot worse than I ever had. And look at him. And I mean, I listened to his voice and it sounded so compelling and he was so sure of it. And it got me into personal development. And so one thing that I tell all coaches is dig into personal development. It's one of the three vital behaviors. I am certified to teach the three vital behaviors workshop training. And that's one thing that people really fail is personal development. This is, you know, personal development, a lot of people think are for people with low self-esteem or with lots of issues. You don't have to. This is something to make you be a better person and make you be the person you were designed to be. Because all of us were born with a purpose. All of us were born to do great things. And all of us were born at good people and happy people and fearless people and you know, who love unconditionally. I mean, look at children. Any child is innocent and that's the way we were all designed to be. Life and circumstances and people and you know, tragic events change us. And, you know, personal development helped me come out of my shell. Being part of a amazing, amazing team that has a great culture. I mean, Diesel Nation is known across our organization for the family feel that we have. I mean, I've had top coaches on my call saying that, that Mindy is part of a unique, unique team within our organization. We are known for our Super Saturdays and how we make people feel welcome and loved regardless of what, um, team they're from. I, mean, I know that Becky and Christina have worked really closely with the rest of the last couple years. We're not even the same upline, you know, or team, but we work closely with people. And that is why I stuck around too. And my coach believed in me. And then the personal development helped me believe in myself. And, you know, at, by the time 2013 came around, I went to Miami. Then I went to Danny Johnson, which literally rocked my soul and changed everything because she was another person who'd been in failure mode for a long time. And her story and my story were a lot alike. And I started to believe in myself and I started to forgive people. I started to, stop, to, you know, stop judging people. And then I stopped caring whether I was judged. And I realized now that I am different than everybody else. And I've always been different than everybody else. And when the world's going left, I'm going right. And I'm not going to go left because the world says go left unless I know why. And I'm pulling people to go right with me instead of going with what the world's doing. I've taught people to be who they are. And I learned that from listening to personal development and from duplicating what I have watched other coaches do. 
If anybody follows Daniel Natoni, um, she's married to Darren. She is in the um, Sandy uh, Max 30. She's the modifier, and she does. She's the master trainer, one of Shanti's best friends. Her and I are really good friends, and I started following her. And I remember watching all these elite coaches, and uh, you know, aspiring to be like them. And I was nervous to be around them. Then I became friends with them, realized that they're just like me. And I started duplicating what they were doing. And if you follow Danielle, you'll, you'll realize that me and her are nothing like our backgrounds, our histories, our family life, our stories, uh, even our goals are totally different. But I, I just listened to her. I listened to her talking about, you know, brand yourself, be yourself. And, you know, I spoke on her team call. Like she said, Minnie's vulgar. She's vulgar, vulgar and inappropriate. She's like, and that's not how I work my business. But that's what I love about her is because she is herself. I'm not being like Danielle. Because if I tried to act like Daniel, it would be so fake because that's not me. But I took the bottom line principle of what she's taught about branding yourself and being yourself. And like she said, I'm unapologetically me. And because of that, people follow me. They know I'm always going to be honest. I, you know, I, was, I posted today, I eat clean so I can drink beer. I mean, you know, those are things that a lot of people out there do, but they hide it because they think they have to be perfect. And they think that they need to be like Danielle or Melissa McAllister, you know, all these coaches they see. But just be and, you know, the biggest thing is following top coaches and not copycatting them, but duplicating what they, what you see them do and the things that they teach. Because these top coaches will share with you everything about how their business has grown. And that's one thing I love about this organization is that we don't judge one another. We don't see each other as competition. We see each other as, you know, a brother or a sister and a family feel. And so for me, watching other people and duplicating exactly what other people have done and not trying to reinvent the wheel and not trying to, you know, be perfect, but just be myself and put my personal flair on it. It's helped me, you know, I, I was able to take my income in, you know, 11 months. I was able to leave my job and fire my boss after 21 months and went from making 30 to $32,000 to $36,000 a year in the insurance industry where I worked for 10 years to making six figures and be able to come home to my family and be there for them. Like today we went to my stepdaughter to the airport so that she could fly out and spend in the summer and possibly this next year with her grandma in, in Tahoe. And I was able to be there instead of at work watching my husband take her on this, you know, take her to the airport. I was able to be there. I was able to be present in my life because I believed in myself because my coach believed in myself because other people on the team believed in myself because I got close to top coaches and became friends with them and made myself I was made to realize that I was just like them and because I have been you know definitely diving into it which has made me a better person and made me you know fearless and know that there's no limits to what I can or can't do um, and I shared this with everybody you know non-stop because I want everybody else to believe that, believe that they can do it because like I said if you didn't know my story and you just started following me for the next month, you would probably never know my story, never know where, you know, where I came from. And so many people look at successful people and just assume that they were born like that or they had a good life. They have it easy because they have this skill or that skill. And really, I've realized that people with the most messed up stories seem to be the most successful because they just won't give up whenever, when other people will. And they know how to roll with the punches. And for me, I turn all my failures and all the bad things that happened to me in my life as a, as into a lesson to teach other people. And it's become a gift because as I share with other people publicly about all the things I've done, you know, in my life, the drug use, the alcohol abuse, the three divorces, the, you know, multiple affairs I'd had, you know, Ryan and I's, you know, up and down marriage problems. I mean, I've shared every problem and we, I've shared my children growing up and my journey mentally as well as physically and health wise has really drawn people in and it's given everybody a you know, I guess a shot at their own success because they're like, well, if she can do it and she's where she is now, then I can do it. So that's all I have to really say, I guess, Marissa. <laughs> Mindy, did your screen freeze? Did y'all oh. hear the last part of what I said? Yes, we heard everything. Okay. Do, do you mind if we see if, if anyone has any questions for you? Not at all. Does anybody have any questions for Mindy? 
before we get off. Okay, well, I guess that's a no. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for getting on the call. I appreciate it. And um, I didn't really even know your whole story. So it was good to actually hear you. Thank you. Um, I was thinking like, when I came to calls, a lot of people friend me. I'm maxed out on friends. So if you would um, just hit the follow and then I'll follow you back if you have the follow option. Like I said, I really highly recommend that you guys open up your pages the public and add the follow option because that's how people are going to be able to watch you yep that's a good that was a good tip I never even thought of like telling people that I just assume that they knew that <laughs> but it's not good to assume well thank you again Lauren did you want something did you want to say something or are you good yeah I just have one question my biggest problem um, with my team my little team underneath Marissa is that we are all on the west coast and then like marissa is on the east coast and so now we're, we're getting some coaches on the east coast so and a lot of us are moms so having like a late call is great for moms but like a late west coast call is like an 11 o'clock late east coast call like what did you how did you do that with, did you, with your team calls what did you do well i have the same problem because a lot of my team's West Coast because I grew up in California, and then I, I mean I have people in like New York, New Jersey, Florida, I mean everywhere too. So you know, for me, I think the time is good for me. So we do Tuesday nights at eight thirty during the summer because we do late nights on Wednesday, but then in the rest of the time we do it on Wednesday at eight thirty. And it's the same thing as the national wake up call. We all know the national wake up call airs, you know, in the middle you know, of the morning, at least here in Texas, at 10, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Well, most people are working. Most people aren't home. Most people aren't full-time coaches. So the same thing is that, you know, I do recordings of what all my team calls, and then I encourage people to watch it, you know, and same thing with the National Wake Up Call. There's a replay. They can, you know, look in the, you know, archives. I mean, so the thing is you have to do what's best for you and just make it consistent and, you know, encourage people to tune in and, you know, really highlight topics on what your team needs you know because you could do topics all day long that are great topics but if it's not the needs of your team they're not it's not going to help and you know and i always suggest having you know guest speakers because most i mean almost all the time what the guest speakers are saying on my team call are exactly what i say but it just comes across different you know how it is you know your husband or your wife or your mom tells your dad tells you something and then your friend tells you and it's like gospel you know um so that's my suggestion yeah all right cool yeah because I was trying to do two team calls and it was just, I, I couldn't do it. It was insane. When so you, when you first signed on to be a coach and you had like no team yet, would you get on, would, would Becky and Christina have calls late and you would get on them super late or what? You just listen to the recording. We would never, we never really had um, like consistent team calls back then, but we would kind of do, we would do calls like after you know, summit or when things were coming up or things that, uh, that were ne as needed for our team. And then, you know, once my team started to grow, um, you know, so I would say I left my job at like November of 2013. In, in some time in 2014, I started doing calls as needed, but then I would get frustrated because not a lot of people would get on because I would just do it as needed, you know, with like four days in advance. So this, you know, at the end of last year and then this year I've gotten a lot more in having a system and running like a business and so i started realizing like this year i did consistent team calls i told everybody in december starting january 1st we're doing team calls every wednesday night however once it gets sunny at the end of april early may we're switching to tuesdays because you know that's our our schedule so and, you know and lauren you know i they tried to you know do what was best for my team and get all the place but then i was exhausted and that kind of takes you know that does take away from the fun of the business and why so many coaches work for life and freedom so if you're scrambling and you know i see that you have two two small children i mean that's impossible and then it makes this business not fun it makes it everything you've worked for not you know at, not worth it i guess if you're you know running around like a crazy person so my thing is pick a day give people an advance let them know what their topics are. You know, I let my team know that like Mercy will be talking on a call on the on the seventh. You know, I always let them know in advance because you know sometimes people are busy and sometimes even knowing if okay it's on a Tuesday and somebody invites them to do something, they can reschedule. Or if it's a call that isn't something that they necessarily 
um, need work on or need help with, they can elect not to be on there. So the biggest thing is consistency and picking what's best for you and setting business hours. And the call is your business hours. You know, like if Starbucks says I'm only open from this hour to this hour, even if somebody else wants to get a coffee at three o'clock in the morning, if they're not open at three o'clock in the morning, they, you know, you're not going to appease your customers. So the thing is, if you have set business hours and set meeting hours, then, you know, they'll, they'll eventually get with it. And, you know, and there may be times where you only have two or three people on a call, you know, over the holidays last year, I had four or five people on the call. You know, and that is a bummer for some coaches, but those are the four or five people I work with. You know, one of my coaches right now, Misty's on the call. She's one that's on there every time. I invited people on this call. And I'm like, you know, I'm speaking in here every time she gets on. Those are the people you work with, you know, and I'm not saying it, you, you know, ignore the other people. Doing that is when you find out who your business builders are. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're I welcome. appreciate you getting on. I know that it, you know, takes time and we appreciate that. I'm so glad you could share and uh, well, I'll be on your call on the seventh. So <laughs> right. and I will see you at summit. Yeah. See we'll see each other at summit for sure. I'm sure. Well, maybe, I don't even know how it's going to be. Everybody's going to be everywhere. Oh, yeah. it's maybe be we'll bump into each other. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll see each other at like the elite reception. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That'll be like a smaller thing. So yeah. Thank you so much again. I appreciate it. And All right. everybody have a good night. All right. You too. See ya. Bye.